this Mars collaboration underscores the capability that we have as Qualcomm to provide in terms of technology. The ability to take this commercial technology that we do, understand the ecosystem we thrive in, and find opportunities to blend that with the U.S. government mission is pretty exciting. You can't imagine that it's not every day your stuff go to Mars, right? <laughs> yeah. JPL through NASA set out to explore Mars. They called it Mars 2020. They reached out to Qualcomm and they asked us about um, opportunities to leverage a cell phone based platform for this type of flight. NASA back in May of 2018 decided to approve a drone platform to be affixed to the bottom of Perseverance to then fly and demonstrate the ability to get out in front of Perseverance or provide reconnaissance data for future planning of the rover. Flying on Mars is very different than flying on Earth because the atmosphere is only about 1% of the, the density. So there's less air to push against to generate lift. You actually need to have more thrust for the takeoff to happen. But at the same time, you need to have a lightweight system because you want it to be able to be in the air. So that's all what is driving this need of a small lightweight system that can be robust. The reason they need the Qualcomm flight is because there's no GPS on Mars. And so to, for the helicopter to understand where it is and where it's going, it has to figure that out some other way. And they use something that uh, in JPL parlance they call terrain relative navigation. This mission is being carried fully autonomously by itself. The fundamental point being that if there's any communication between Mars and Earth, and if there was a remote pilot operating this, it would take 20 minutes for a, a signal to go between Mars and Earth. Then the helicopter, when it takes off, it will basically keep tracking of its own trajectory. It knows exactly which direction it's going. As the, the helicopter is flying over the surface, it takes pictures of the ground underneath and uh, it watches the edges as they move, like stones in the field of view. And as it moves across the camera frame, it's now shifted to where they're actually helping the rover plan where they're gonna go next because they can scout out ahead, look around at the terrain, uh, you know, send pictures back to Earth. They can identify interesting places to look for some science. Having a helicopter there is gonna increase the range that you can explore with versus uh, a rover. Right, a rover is great, but uh, the helicopter, when they lift it up in the air for, say, 100 meters, your coverage is uh, multiple times of what the rover can do. The plan was a 30-day mission and up to five flights, and it was just proof of concept. Is it even possible to fly on Mars? We've now gone well past that, right? They got to the end, and they said, okay, it's still working, it's still running, and this could be really useful. It's a very proud moment to be especially part of the history, right? We know that this is the future. Robotics is going to be an integral part of the society, and Qualcomm playing an important role in this is huge. Having the collaboration between a commercial company like Qualcomm and the government like JPL is really what brings those things forward. And so we're very affectionate in terms of the way we deal with the government, in terms of our ability to learn at the same time that they're learning. And so um, it is the type of thing that gets us up out of bed and keeps us really excited about what we're doing for our U.S. government. So I'd like a future where, where NASA and JPL can use our technology for Earth science as well, to watch the clouds, to predict weather with more accuracy, using it to detect forest fires. Not only are you seeing that in the government space, but there's this new explosion of small companies in the small side industry. Now we're gonna be able to identify a lot more things happening in real time and go address them more quickly.